from the federal state of Australia, arguing that this Aboriginal people had never ceded sovereignty to the British colonists in the first place. It's not a claim that's been recognised by other Australian politicians, but it is definitely a lively debate. To put you in the picture, let's show you a map of Australia. You can see uh, the outlines of this First Nation in northern New South Wales. They're based around the town of Daguda, which is about 10 hours' drive from Sydney. With me now is the leader of the Ualiai Nation, Gillar. And let's start with your aim. What are you trying to achieve here, Gillar? Well, what we're trying to do is to assert our sovereignty so that our people are not living in absolute poverty and despair and total dependency upon, you know, the Australian taxpayers' money for our survival. And so <clears throat> we need to restore um, a bit of pride and dignity back into our people because they've been totally demoralised. You're not talking just about your nation, in fact, but all of the first people. Um, I know you've described it before about a bit like Yugoslavia becoming its constituent nation. Mm -hmm. Is it about Australia changing its outline altogether? Yes, it is. It's very, very much that. And um, because there's still 300 different languages being spoken in Australia, Aboriginal languages. And so those First Nations are starting to rise and they're making their unilateral declarations of independence the same way in which it was accepted through in Kosovo. How would this make a difference in practical terms? I mean, if you look, for example, at the, at the land, at the environment, what changes would you see if your dream was realised? Well, it, it enables the people to take control of their own uh, natural resources. It takes, um, gives the people responsibility That's good. to adapt I think I'm about to extend a burst of about 31 <laughs> And so we step outside of this system yeah, of, um, of man being the dominant um, factor over nature. We're not. We're part of nature. And we need to take care of nature. You're talking on behalf of many of the First Peoples. But of course, in the hundreds of years of, of colonization of Australia, there are people now who live on, who have built on, who own the land. The new Australians, you, I mean, you, you have an almost impossible fight on your hands here, don't you? Not necessarily, because there are a lot of non-Aboriginal people who are asking us, what, they want to learn what we're doing, they want to know about what we're doing, and they want to know where they fit in the scheme of things, and they want to look at, want us to paint the picture of how we integrate. So it's not necessarily about wrestling ownership from where it is in modern Australia to what it was before, it's about... Um, are learning to live together in a different way? That's correct. And it's, it's learning to accept that we were the first Australians and the fact that we have sovereignty over that. The Mabo case in 1992, the High Court case, recognised that Aboriginal people's law and culture survived British sovereignty, which means that our law is a continental law that underpins the existing nation state of Australia, which means in technical and legal terms in modern um, times is that we're an occupied state by a foreign power and so we need to work through this and, um, and I, I believe that we have the mechanisms and the ability to be able to negotiate our way through this. But when I look at what you've written about this, you, you've talked about constant lies, about deceit, about Australian politicians as colonial caretakers, I mean by insulting those you try to negotiate with, it's, it's not a very promising way forward, is it? Well, a lot of, the, a lot of their own constituents within Australia, which is 22 million of them, are basically saying the same thing. They're liars and deceitful, and, um, and that Australia needs to get back to um, a collective um, truth. And that's something that Australia refuses to do. And you know, people like John Howard and, and Tony Abbott have, you know, have constantly um, avoided telling the truth about Australia and, and the truth of uh, colonialism, and they even stop history being taught in schools. Just one more short thought, if you can. Can Australia learn from, say, New Zealand or Canada? Where else would you point where you think matters historically have been managed better? Well, the thing is that I've spoken to a lot of Canadian Indians um, over the years, and they're not happy with the existing structure. Native Americans are the same. Their treaties are not the same. They're being abused and they're being breached. And so what we need to do is, is come back to, I guess, um, the start and, and really begin to analyse where we've been, have a look at where we're at, and let's go forward. But I think we need to design that as an international unit rather than... Because we've all been impacted by British um, colonialism. Gilad, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us in the studio. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you.